So we're going to take another look at a slightly more difficult ramp pulley problem. In the last problem we guessed, it was pretty obvious really which way it was going to go. And in this case, it's going to be a little less obvious. So here, instead of 20 degrees, we're at 30 degrees. It's still a 5 kilogram object, but it's attached via a open pulley to a 3 kilogram hanging object. The co coefficient of friction, this is at rest for the beginning of the problem. So this is at rest, so this is static friction is going to be 0 0.2. And the question is, which way will it move? Well, I mean, we can sort of guess. Let's guess. Let's assume that it's still going to move the same way, that the 3 kilogram mass is going to come down, and the 5 kilogram mass is going to go up. Draw a free body diagram, which is exactly the same for the 5 kilogram mass. Uh, we have gravity's components, x and y. We have the force of friction. We've got the normal force and the tension. Over here, the free body diagram is essentially the same as well. Fg is going to be 3g. Okay, so if we look at our 5 kilogram mass, we get the same expression we had before, the tension minus Fgx minus the force of friction equals ma. That's the x direction. And if we look in the y direction, hopefully this is becoming familiar by now, Fn minus Fgy equals zero, which means that the normal force is equal to Fgy, which is going to be 42.4 newtons. Just like before, the force of friction is mu Fn, and I'll just save you a little calculation. That works out to be 8.5 newtons. So now at least I can put friction back in here. I still don't know tension. I still don't know acceleration. So I'm going to need another equation. I look over here. In this case, 3g is positive. So 3g minus ft equals ma. I'm going to just add these two equations like I did last time. The tensions will cancel out. And we'll end up with an expression that looks like this. 3g minus fgx minus ff equals 5 plus 3a, which is 8a. I go ahead and I do my math. I get a equals 3g is 29.4 minus fgx, which is 24.5 minus 8.5, all divided by 8. I grab my calculator, and there's a problem. The answer is negative 0.45 meters per second squared, and I am confused. How can it be negative? Well, obviously our guess was wrong. So does that mean it goes the other way? No. Hang on a second, let's think about this. The acceleration is negative. Friction is in the negative direction. But hopefully you understand that there's no way friction is actually going to cause this thing to go down the ramp. So if we're wrong and it went this way, we can't just assume this is the right answer because now our friction is in the wrong direction. But if we assume the other direction is positive, we might still just get a negative number and now you're very confused. But let's stop and think about this for a second. What would happen if there was no friction? Let's just simplify it. What if friction was zero? If the force of friction was equal to zero, that's why I've written this expression out so nicely. If the force of friction was equal to zero, I can just look here and I can see that A would be 29.4 minus 24.5 over 8. And then the acceleration would be equal to positive 0.6125 meters per second squared. Okay? If the force of friction is zero, then I'll get a positive number. So this thing does want to go up the ramp. So we were correct. It should go this way. So what do we do with the negative number? Well, the answer is to go back. And remember that this formula for friction is a maximum value. That is the maximum value of friction. It won't be that large unless it needs to be. And in this case, what we're discovering is it doesn't need to be. So what is going to happen? Friction will be as big as it needs to be. I believe it's 4.9 newtons. A will end up being 0. Okay. And this system will not start. It simply won't start moving. Friction is more powerful than the, uh, than, than the gravitational forces that are going to try and make it go. And it will just sit there. Boo! You saw.